um, the way at all. There's a much better way that God is not must not exercise justice through the cross. So you get emergent leaders like Brian McLaren saying that the that what a bloodthirsty God we have, and that the cross is not the gospel of the Bible. So in this idea of wanting to embrace all religions as one and become one with Buddhists and Hindus and, um, you know, create all gods as equal, what we're seeing is that, well, everybody's okay. There's no Satan. There's no sin. Um, Reconciliation, we can all have reconciliation without faith. We don't have to exercise faith. We don't have to repent. There's no future judgment. All are equally children of God. And sadly, the evangelical church is embracing all this. And, you know, getting back to Halloween, that's why hundreds of thousands of Christians embrace this festival of death tonight, which it all did oh. Um You know, embrace yeah. this Halloween God when... The God of the Bible thought that death was so terrible that he gave his only begotten son so that we could be freed from death. We shouldn't be celebrating death. We should hate it. Right. Uh, Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, Halloween, like I said, every year seems to get more darker and uh, the the costumes, you know, look like something out of a black mass. Uh, You know, it's terrible and um i just ventured into a store here a little bit ago and um i couldn't believe it children walking around uh five-year-olds three-year-olds um and just walking around like nothing's wrong and um you know that's the the seduction of of this time of the year it, is that it's all about having fun it's a fun time of the year and uh but as christians you know, I can't believe that they cannot see through this and see the the darkness and the occult side to it. But then again, that's up to the leaders, uh, the pastors and the, and the leaders in this country to, to spell it out. And there there are, you know, pastors that are doing that, I'm sure. But, um, you know, there's this kind of a lukewarmness that's setting in a little bit uh, with some believers that just thinks that, you know, you know what? What's the harm in it? You know, I, I can separate, you know, all the dark side uh, uh, and all the evil. That's not why I'm celebrating Halloween. I'm just doing it for fun. But uh, and you know, like you're talking about, Carol. In the last, these are the last days. I believe this. You know, um, and the occult world is um, growing and growing. Um, you know, just like we were talking about with Harry Potter. Um, you know, the first time in history, presenting itself in children's books. And, um, you know, it's just a, a conditioning process. And, uh, you know, if anything, um, Christians should stand against us on, on the principle of the word, you know. And, um, you know, like you were talking about, people think you're a little narrow or whatever, well, you know, fine, so be it then. Uh, we need to stand on the Word of God like never before. And I and I, I know and I can relate to what you're saying because, you know, we live in a tolerant age, you know, and that's thanks to um, the New Age movement to where your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth, this kind of uh, tolerate everything mentality. Uh, we don't want to offend nobody, you know, anymore. That somebody that speaks out strongly um, can appear to be um, prudish, I guess, or, or narrow-minded or whatever. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm like you. I just want to stand on the principle of the Word of God because the Word of God is true. If you don't have the Word of God, uh, what do you have? You but have lies. Always, I mean, the Word of God it says that we must not be involved in pagan activities, in um, right. bondage. They don't and, take it seriously uh, enough. We're, we're not to do that. But you see, people, Satan comes not with horns on his head and a tail. And uh, he he comes uh-huh. as a fun party maker, you know, and that when we've got parties and candy being given out to the kids and parents say, well, it's we're fun. just for the candy. But 
you know, all you have to do, if, if somebody just looked, at, looked objectively in any store today at the Halloween decorations and to see um, the dark side, what is being represented here, tombs, tombstones, uh, ghosts, cobwebs, black cats, everything symbolizing death. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, as we talked earlier, saying that this is a time when children disappear and they're killed in the streets. But I remember at a time there was um, quite a big sort of uh, warning that came out at Halloween time that uh, candy had been poisoned and that um, sometimes the apples in, in, in Europe, we you know, there were apples that were given out, but there were uh, razor blades in the apples and some of the candy was drugged. And, you know, these are the sort of horrible stuff that comes with the mayhem of Halloween. I, I remember, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I still know that many people just don't even want to be around and leave their houses at Halloween so that they don't have to be um, bombarded with um, uh, people coming coming around. But there were times mm -hmm. when lawn furnishings used to be um, disrupted, uh, uh, trees used to be toilet papered, you know, people had to put mm -hmm. away their belongings in cars because of uh, property damage and um, damage night. You know, the mm -hmm. extra policemen are hired for this particular night at great expense to the citizens because this has become a significant problem in many cities. So, um, yeah, I, I think we've got to be vigilant in seeing what this particular holiday does represent. It represents mayhem and chaos. And right. uh, I came from the dark side of the occult. I was involved in the New Age. I saw it growing up, um, the dark mm -hmm. side of uh, Eastern mysticism, growing up in India for the first 20 years of my you know, life. First so, mm -hmm. You know, I, it, it isn't made up. It's... Um, it's around, and I know it's dressed today as fun, and I know many churches say, well, we're just doing alternatives, but why would we think about doing an alternative on a satanic holiday? I don't understand why, you know, do we do alternatives for Ramadan? I mean, are we going to get to having alternatives for the Muslim holidays and the Hindu holidays? Why do we have an alternative for a satanic pagan holiday like this? So it, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, you know, some Christians will have their children even dress up still, and I, I'm thinking, like, well, they're dressing them up in innocent type of, um, you know, characters or whatever, but it's like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can go for that one per se, um, now, handing out tracts, um, you know, I, I can go for that if folks want to at least try to redeem the time or do something, you know, to oh, witness yeah, I the think, I think yeah. taking every opportunity to present the gospel of truth is wonderful. And I think uh -huh. this is what it's all about. You know, we don't need to celebrate the holiday with an alternative celebration but we can certainly use this particular time to pray for um, the families who are going to have children missing, for the, the hundreds of thousands of pagans that are involved in the rituals of, of um, maybe very mundane things that they do. I mean, they may appear mundane to them because they will tell you that they do not commit human sacrifices. They don't, they're not involved in blood sacrifices. Right, I, yeah. But they don't understand they don't lie. calling down powers and principalities to come into them, to imbue them with power, is just as bad. You see, it's believed. Uh -huh. it's in, sorry. Uh, I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Because one <laughs> of the things that is is very important to remember about this particular end of the year holiday. I mean, this idea that. The year is ending and a new year is beginning. Well, the, within paganism, with this holiday of Samhain, Samhain, the veil between the two worlds, this world and the other world, they believe is the thinnest. So as the old year is going out and the new year is coming in, they, they believe that this is the best time to contact 
those now they will call them uh, those that have passed on. They they think that the spirits of their loved ones can be contacted, but the Bible tells us, us that these are demons and that all these spirits um, are not to be contacted. The pagan world thinks that it's their grandparents or friends or whatever, but the Bible tells us that when we die, if we're believers in Jesus Christ, at our death we will immediately go into his presence. And if we're not believers, then we don't go into his presence. There is only one death, and this is right. this is what happens at death. So the idea that you can contact your aunts or uncles or best friends or loved ones as these spiritualists and pagans believe that they can go into this thinnest veil, so to speak, and contact these universal beings where they think that they're getting great wisdom. But you see, when Eve was in the Garden of Eden, Satan tempted her with have, being able to have wisdom and that she could get the power of the knowledge of good and evil. So it's uh-huh. exactly the same thing that's happening today, that pagans think that they can dabble with this thinnest veil between the two worlds during this month and be able to call down these powers and principalities to imbue them with more powers, more wisdom, and uh, that they can pray to have a better year filled with knowledge and enlightenment and all of these kind of things. And, um, you know, they believe that um, uh, they can do these uh, rituals, that they make a circle around themselves, a circle of protection, they believe. But when I interviewed one of the witches one time, she said, yeah, even with the circle around them in the ceremony, one of the girls got suddenly taken over by these, um, this horribly deep voice that came into her. So, oh. you see, they believe that they're putting protection around them, but there is no protection outside of Jesus Christ and obedience Amen. to Jesus Christ. That's our protection. Uh, that, um, Amen. Jesus uh, defeated Satan on the cross. He defeated death. And in him, we have all power to overcome uh, the wiles of the devil. Nothing short of that gives us any power to um, combat this. And I have talked to kids, so many kids who got involved with the Harry Potter series and um, in the movie I made called Supernatural Powers where I interviewed kids who had befriended these um, spirit guides uh, through all uh-huh. sorts of ways, through a Ouija board, through... Uh, goosebump stories, I mean, all sorts of different ways that they had these ex- uh, ex- spiritual experiences, if you will. And um, they admitted to times when they had nightmares and horrors and couldn't shake things off and can't sleep. Um, and, you know, I would encourage anybody listening, if they have dabbled in the occult, if they have uh, played with Ouija boards or done things that they know, Uh, are contacting the spirit world and if they're not sleeping at night, if they're having nightmares, if they've got uh, fears and panics and if they go through times when they want to commit suicide and all these sort of things, that they come to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, you know, if you are real, please, Mm -hmm. Lord, reveal yourself to me. I'm sorry. I've sinned. I realize what I've done. I don't want to be involved in the world of darkness. Please take me out of the world of darkness. Please bring me into your kingdom of light. And 1 John 1, 9, which is a verse in the Bible, says that if we confess our sins, then he who is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So it just takes someone to come to Jesus, confess their sins, and they will be cleansed of all unrighteousness. Then they need to go to the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to lead them into truth and light, mix with the Bible-believing Christians, not people that call themselves Christians and dabble in all sorts of weird things, but somebody that really knows the Bible so that they can be discipled Because Jesus, the very last thing Jesus said was that we need to make disciples of one another so that we can know what we have in Christ 
know who we are in Christ, that we are children of God in Christ, and that nothing uh-huh. separates us from the love of him. So, you know, yeah. the, if if this is what somebody wants to do, then in faith they can reach out to the God of the universe, the creator God, and he will be faithful to his promises because he is a God of faithfulness and a God Amen. of love that wants us Amen. all to have everlasting life. He died that none should perish. Amen. Mm-hmm. And um, they're looking for 